I guess I didn't fix it. Another turn in the road, fellas. What I talk about on my videos, you're always chasing a cat. Like a cat's chasing its tail. Vibration in the car. Don't know why. Just have a bent rod. Frank could be bent. Who knows? But it kind of brings me to if it wasn't for the 302s splitting in half, there would really be no reason in my book to even look for another engine as far as cubic inches go, especially with power routers that are out now. Everybody's using them. But uh, that brings me on to this other kind of a segment that I wanted to discuss. I was on YouTube a week or so ago, and I've been debating if I should bring this up or not. There was a guy on there talking about the LS engines, and he says he's getting sick of them. And I'm a diehard Ford guy, a uh, Ford guy, but the thing is, is that you got to give credit where credit's due. Are they a perfect engine, the LS's? No. But are they a very good race engine? Yes, they are. This guy was comparing them to a big block Chevy. And then almost to a Proline engine. So, he says that they don't do anything different than any motor would do as far as like a 350 Chevy, a Ford engine. And I'm going to set the record straight. An LS engine has already done what none of them engines would do. And I'm a Ford person. So I have no reason to say anything defending the LS engine. But it's like this here. This guy sells heads for a living. So naturally he's going to be upset when you can go to a junkyard and get an engine anywhere from 100 bucks to 500 to a thousand, depending on what state you're in, where, what town, uh, who, if your body has it laying around. Long story short, this is a budget thing that I always come across on. It's it's a budget thing, the way I look at stuff all the time. Because if you want to put a thousand dollars in something, you can pick any engine you want. But an LS engine, I know a guy right now. He went to a shootout. And won that whole shootout against a big block cubed out Nova on nitrous on racing gas with a $300 LS engine and has a glide behind it and the car has been as fast as 850s so what Ford engine or any other engine you want to think of old school 350 what engine are you possibly going to gloss in the junkyard and get and have it be where you can do that you can make a Ford motor do that buying cylinder heads and any other Chevrolet engine you can build a, bit, a small block Chevy a big block Chevy pretty cheap but I'm talking about just flossing in Having a block that will hold 1,500 horsepower, these guys are in the sevens with these blocks. I mean, Ford guy, Chevy guy, Mopar guy. This is all common sense, fellas. This is a, one of them deals where you can't even, you can't really say anything bad. And if you are saying something bad about it, then you're just being biased. I'm a Ford person. And as far as it goes with some of the guys hype it up. The LSs have their share of problems. We have two of them. But that's not why I'm doing this segment because it wouldn't matter if I had two of them. I know, fellas, my Ford friends, the Coyotes are great. But you can't walk in the junkyard and get them for a hundred bucks. You can't have a buddy have one laying around out of a truck where the trans is bad out. Like we've had happen and give it the engine to you. I never thought the day would come, I was hoping it would, where you could go to the junkyard and find something with aluminum heads in a block. This is something that we would find back in my day, that would be even back in my time, 30 years ago, 
or 40 years ago, the block alone would be like a, a big deal. It'd be like a door. To go to the junkyard and get that out of the junkyard? Come on, guys. Whether you like them or not. I know LS, LS, LS. I understand that, guys. But this guy that was on YouTube, how dare you to compare that to a big block Chevy? Say, so you go to the track, and the first thing you'll see is a big block Chevy. And if you really want to compare the LS to a big block Chevy, if you really want to do this, I haven't seen an LS engine push the crank out. Maybe you guys have pushed them with power adders, and they'll say, oh yeah, you're using power adders, go that fast. Who's not using a power adder today? But I go off track a little bit, but a big block Chevy, you start making 800 to 1,000 horsepower, it starts walking the crank. Ask anybody that builds them. That's why most of the time, you still see aftermarket block. When you see these Chevys, they're not stock Chevrolet engines. The last fast Chevrolet engine I saw was my friend. It went 790s, and that was a stock block, but it was doing exactly what I'm talking about. It was on the verge of pushing the crank out. And it was a standard bore 454. As a matter of fact, we put burlap heads on it, and it only picked up a tenth of a second from the steel heads. That's another segment. But guys, I, I didn't want this to be a debate channel, but when you hear somebody makes uh, statements like that and then you have a, a guys that are following this guy and they listen to what he says somebody else has to stand up and set the record straight I hate being that guy but I'm just not one of these guys who can sit back whether it's Chevy Ford Mopar the truth has to be said about when something's good when it's not good and I'll be the first one to tell you I might be a Ford person but Ford does some messed up stuff all the water pump bolts yeah uh, which one goes where every time but everybody I know guys out there that they like what they like and some guys are willing to spend the money to build whatever they don't care about if it's good from the factory or you know anything that has to do with already 500 horsepower some guys will build their own stuff but come on guys, when you when you have an engine that's sitting around the junkyard, you can walk in and pay three or four hundred bucks for it, put it in a car and go out and, and do what they do. You can't get mad at these guys, fellas. All the guys having the Mustangs, if the 302 held up and didn't split, you price a half the LS is not being these Mustangs, but I can't get mad at anybody for putting an LS in one of these cars. There, there's no reason really not to if, unless you don't have the funds to do it because it's not like you just set the motor in. There's other stuff to go along with it, especially if you're fuel injected. But, uh, you know, guys, I don't really want to rant here, you know, talking smack about anybody else. I'm just trying to make the record straight where if anybody else follows this guy, they're like, hey, hey, you're right. Yeah, we're tired of hearing all the LS hype. I'm the last guy. That would be sticking up for the Dallas engines when it comes to being a Ford Blue blood. But truth is the truth, fellas. And we have to always say what's true. And uh, so don't get upset. If somebody pulls up with a Mustang, has an LS engine in it, you can't get really mad at them. And that's all I got to really say about this, guys. You know? I mean, as far as the 302s, these engines here have been beat up three and 400,000 miles on them. They're not rebuilt or anything. This is what we run. That's why I say we run junk. We run absolutely junk. Rust in the cylinders, sandpapering it out twice. Matter of fact, the guy that gave us this engine back bought the car. He put LS in my son's Fairmont that they purchased from us. The car runs really good. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to run this by you. Uh, let me get back on this thing. Last time I had a problem like this here, fellas, I kept revving it up. It wasn't pretty. I, I checked the balancer. There was nothing wrong with the balancer until I just pushed on it a little bit more like I was just doing here, and it broke the whole crank off. And you guys were like, oh, you're going to blow that up doing that. You don't want to do that. I, I would rather do that. Have it happen here in this driveway 
than have it happen at the track. And sometimes you can't find these vibrations. Uh, it doesn't seem like a miss to me. It, it, it peters out and then it comes back and that's just what the balancer did on another 302 I had. Well, I'll find, I guess, guys, uh, just keep checking and going over it. And I think I need my old stick back. I used to use a stick. <laughs> it used to work. But anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in again. Listen to me. Give my two cents. Thank you, fellas. Have a good night.